Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Together in oneness, we are Abe. This video is going to be a continuation of the Lost Knowledge of Soul Origins, The Seven Rays of Light. If you haven't yet watched the other parts of this video series, I suggest that you go watch those videos first so that you're all caught up and it might make understanding this video a little bit easier. Today we're going to have even deeper conversations about the seven rays of light, how souls are created, what happens to souls after the physical incarnation dies, some convoluted stuff about the galactic central sun, uh, source creator, returning back to source or returning back to the galactic sun, and that in between time after a soul or after the physical incarnation dies, we're going to dive deep in conversation in this video. And to expand upon the seven rays of light, we're going to talk about the seven rays of light as crystalline grids. And this is more so regarding the seven rays of light when interpreted into the physical. So let's get right into it. My first question was, how are souls created? And what came through was, most souls originate from the third ray vibration. The third ray is the heart. When joined with the mind, the first two rays, a soul is found in the heart of the cosmos. When a soul is born, it is not born to parents. It is born in the heart and the mind of the cosmos which is the same. The soul is not born from open energy. It is born from open heart. I asked, so where exactly is the soul found or born? And what came through was in the heart and mind of the cosmos. Most people know it as the great central sun. And I said, is it also known as the Akashic Records? And what came through was yes. And I said, and so from there, the soul just goes wherever? And what came through was, yes, the soul meets with the Galactic Council. They are given an assignment based upon open energy of the universe and what is needed to keep the balance. The soul more so goes where it's needed. From there starts the soul's experiences and vibrational expansion or not expansion. The souls that are born contain the balance of mind, body, and spirit, as well as the integration of all seven rays of light within their soul. So here it is, the mind, which is the second ray, the body, which is the third ray, and the spirit, which is the first ray, the, the trinity of mind, body, spirit. And this is all integrated into the soul along with the mind and heart balance. Abe goes on to say that there are also few souls in your universe born straight from source energy itself. They are born with the vibration of the first and second rays of light, and when they die, they will return back to source. I asked, will the souls born from the vibration of the third ray or that great central sun ever return back to source? And what came through was, when all universes cease to exist? This is a loaded question because the soul will always return to where it was birthed. Most souls in this universe originate from the vibration of the third ray of light and birthed in the mind and heart of the universe, the great central sun. Returning to the great central sun is much like being embraced by source. The great central sun is similar to source, but in the direct universe, the soul was born into. Source origin is outside of the universe. Souls that originate from source will return back to source. Souls that originate from source can incarnate into other universes, wherever source energy is needed. Souls that originate from the third ray of light or the great galactic sun can only incarnate within the universe that they were born into. I asked, how do beings travel within the universe? And what came through was, your universe is made up of many galaxies, more than you can ever imagine. Each contain a galactic sun. The galactic sun is a portal but also creates portals in space that connects to many of the other galaxies. 
The solar sun is a portal to your direct solar system. The great central sun is not a portal to other universes, but open creative energy that connects back to source. So here we're being told basically that there's three suns. There is the solar sun, which is the sun that we see in the sky, the sun in our solar system. And that is a portal within our solar system and it connects to many other galaxies, it connects to wherever. And then there is the galactic sun, which is kind of like the great central sun, but to our galaxy only. And then there is the great central sun, which is sort of like the source of our universe only. And then above the great central sun is the source creator, which created not only our universe, but many other universes. And if you want to get into how many universes there are, I asked Abe, did Source only create our universe or did Source create other universes? And what came through was Source created other universes. You can measure the amount of universes by stars in the sky. So there is a lot of other universes, I'm assuming, by that information. I asked, how do we get to other universes? And what came through was Abe kept on repeating, it's not easy to get to other universe. It's not easy to get to other universes. It's not easy to get to other universes. So I guess it's not easy to get to other universes. My next question was, so after a person dies, does their soul go back to or reintegrate with the ray that they most associate with? So for example, if in a lifetime, a, a person in the physical body or the soul is able to vibrate at the fifth ray, when the, the physical vessel dies, does that soul integrate with the fifth ray vibration or energy? Or does the soul go back to the third ray, which it was born from? And what came through was, no, the seven rays are like crystalline grids that vibrate at unique frequencies. Souls do not go back to the crystalline grid. They create from the space of the energetic crystalline grid, the ray of light that they energetically align to. Most light workers on earth are vibrationally aligning to the third ray and the central fifth ray. Central to fourth ray vibration is open hearts. Some humans, meaning non light workers, are vibrationally aligning to the sixth and the seventh rays of light. Very lost souls are not aligning vibrationally to any of the seven rays of light. I asked, So where do souls go after they die? And what came through was souls who originate from source return back to source. Souls that originate from the third ray vibration will return to the great central sun if they transition in higher vibration. I asked, what happens to souls who die and who originate from the third ray vibration, but who have lost their way and maybe they've fallen into the lower vibrations or maybe even off of the seven rays of light along their experience? And what came through was, these souls do not return back to the great central sun. They go to the galactic sun, which is what Abe describes as a shorter version of the great central sun. In that hierarchy, it is below the great central sun. The soul's vibration must be of higher vibration, meaning the third ray of light. I don't know if it also maybe applies to the fourth ray of light, because that's also a pretty high vibration. Um, but they're saying that it, the soul's vibration during the time of transition must be of a higher vibration to return back to the great central sun. And because they said that, if souls do not vibrate at a high frequency or vibration, they do not go to the great central sun, they go to the galactic sun. So I asked, what exactly is the galactic sun? And what came through was, the galactic sun is a meeting stand. And I said, do you mean like a meeting place? And Abe was like, more so a meeting stand, because souls will stand in line to meet with the galactic council. It is also like a mini Akashic Records of your direct galaxy. 
the great central sun is a larger Akashic Records of the entire universe. I asked, what does the Galactic Council do? And what came through was the Galactic Council reviews the soul's vibration and places the soul where it needs to go next, kind of like the sorting hat on Harry Potter. They place the soul where it needs to go, whether a healing chamber or a new incarnation or the stagnant void. The stagnant void is not a bad place, but more like a resting place. The soul placement, this process, is not a bad place. It's mostly energy of love and kindness. There is no judgment or reviewing of life, but more so a learning process for the soul to expand. They go on to say, This is also known as the in-between place, a realm of higher energy governed by by the higher energetic beings like the Galactic Council, angelic beings, higher dimensional beings, etc. Souls that transition, that vibrate in the lower frequencies, can sometimes go to the old paradigm of self-created hell based upon belief systems of their incarnation. But there is no hell, only the hell that you create in your own mind. I said, so, because you said before that the galactic sun was a portal and also opened up other portals in space, I said, does this mean that the galactic council and the in-between place exist in a portal or in this portal? And what came through was yes, more so like a portal within a portal. They exist in a portal within the galactic sun. I asked, what about souls who originate from source? but maybe along their incarnation experience, they somehow lower their vibration down to the lower rays or even off of the whole seven rays of light, like they're not even on the board. Maybe they turn into lost souls. Where do they go when they die? And what came through was the souls that originate from source will always return to source when they transition. I said, so even if they fall off the seven rays of light vibration, and what came through was yes, they always integrate back with source. I asked, so what about souls who do not originate from source, so meaning they're born out of the third ray, but in their physical experience, they're able to attain higher vibrations, and maybe they get to the first ray or the second ray in vibration. Do they return to source after they die? And what came through was no, because they do not originate from source, but they have the opportunity to visit source after their physical vessel has transitioned. And so I asked again, so where do these souls return to? And what came through was they return to the great central sun. And then I asked them to tell me more about the rays of light as described as crystalline grids. And what came through was... The rays of light are not energy sources that a soul returns to when they die. They are energy grids that souls vibrate at in the soul form. They can be seen as waves of frequency and vibration. The outermost rays, the last four rays, vibrate at a slower and lower frequency. The higher rays, the closer to source, such as the first three rays, vibrate at a faster, higher frequency. The ray or wave that the soul vibrates at is the vibrational space that the soul creates at. Abe says that it is the vibrational space that the soul creates in the non-physical, which ultimately trickle down into the physical. So I asked them to tell me more about the first ray, crystalline grid. The vibration of this ray and this crystalline grid is usually opened only up into the non-physical soul level. The first ray crystalline grid is all about energy directly from source into the non-physical open energy. It is God energy. Creating from this grid is creating worlds in the image of God. It is God-like and it represents the spirit in the mind, body, spirit, trinity. Then I asked them to tell me more about the second ray crystalline grid. The vibration of this ray and crystalline grid is usually only opened up in the non-physical soul level. The second ray crystalline grid 
opens universal knowledge into the non-physical open energy. Creating from this grid is creating thought of God into the non-physical. It is that God mind that holds knowledge. It represents the mind in the mind-body-spirit trinity. The third ray crystalline grid, this is the vibration that usually only opens up in the non-physical soul level. The third ray crystalline grid opens love and life directly from open creative energy. Creating from this grid is pulling love directly from the universe into the soul or the body or the form in the non-physical. It is that God image or image of God, and it represents the body in the mind, body, spirit, trinity. The fourth ray crystalline grid, the vibration of this ray and crystalline grid opens up to both the non-physical and the physical. However, keep in mind that the physical um, interpretation is a further refraction of the non-physical interpretation. So it has the chance to sort of get a little bit distorted or skewed because it's being further refracted from the original seven rays of light. The fourth ray crystalline grid is about that pure balance of mind, body, and spirit in both the physical and the non-physical soul level. Creating from this grid is pulling in love for self and love for others into the physical. Physical manifestation of the vibration of the fourth ray is open hearts and balance in the mind, body, spirit, trinity within. The fifth ray crystalline grid, the vibration of this grid is both non-physical and physical. The fifth ray crystalline grid opens truth and knowingness and energy of healing from a higher self aspect. It opens knowing the truth from source in both the physical and the non-physical soul, meaning knowing that source is within and that you are a part of source. Creating from this space is creating from a place of truth and knowingness of the higher self and source and also pulling in creative energy of healing through thought. Physical manifestation of this ray is healing and knowing oneness in the physical. The sixth ray crystalline grid, this vibration can also be opened up or interpreted both in the non-physical and the physical. The sixth ray crystalline grid opens the ability to create and manifest in the physical and the non-physical from divine inspiration and spiritual insight. This is about mastering the art of manifestation. Physical manifestation of the sixth ray is that divine inspiration that flows to you that sparks creativity. Physical manifestation is also having that alignment with your physical and non-physical divine body. Um, so it's like that alignment that helps you to manifest and create things as well. And finally, the seventh ray crystalline grid. This vibration is also opened up in both the non-physical and the physical. The seventh ray crystalline grid is all about recognition. Recognition of inner power and strength as a non-physical being having a physical experience. So this opens the physical into that connection with the non-physical soul. And it opens the soul into having that connection to its further journey of expansion. So creating from this space is recognizing your power within to create your own reality from a non-physical vibrational higher frequency space. But first you have to have that recognition that you are non-physical energy having a physical experience. And from there you can start to work within that non-physical vibrational space, that higher frequency space in order to start creating your reality. Physical manifestation of the seventh ray is also the shifting of your energy and your thoughts and your feelings so that you're existing more so in a higher vibrational space. Abe goes on to say that the sixth and the seventh rays of light, but specifically I think the sixth ray of light, were the crystalline grid, the non-physical vibrational vortex that we as Abraham Hicks spoke of when we talked about getting into your vortex to create and then pull into your physical reality. 
We were shifting humans from creating unconsciously in the physical space into creating consciously in the non-physical vibrational vortex and then aligning to your creations in the physical. This is the act of mastering your ability as manifestors on a physical planet, creating in the non-physical space first. You create with your thoughts first in the non-physical and then you speak it into manifestation. Not so much speak per se, but more so pulling it into your physical experience. We say speak because it very much aligns with the first, second, and third rays of light in terms of that vibration of word opening up or birthing that third ray of light from the first and second rays. That vibration or the word has the ability and the power to bring that vibration into your physical or interpret it into your physical as well as through your soul to manifest thought into something real or manifested. The seventh ray is all about opening yourself up in the physical to realize that you are a non-physical being or energy having a physical experience. This allows you to recognize your ability as conscious creators, shifting your thoughts and consciousness, manifesting first your thoughts and feelings, and getting into this higher vibrational space. The sixth ray allows you to play with the energy of universal energy and create through your inspiration, create through that higher vibrational space, manifesting your desires, your dreams, your thoughts, and turning it into things. They then go on to say that the purpose of the soul is expansion. As the soul expands, it climbs the ladder of the seven rays and vibrates to whatever ray that it can. Usually an incarnation on a lower vibrational planet such as 3D Earth will plunge the soul into the lower rays, most likely the seventh ray, sometimes below or off the chart, off of the grid. And I asked why, and what came through was because the experience on the planet will pull the soul down vibrationally. And I asked, but can't the soul hold a higher vibration for the physical incarnation? And what came through was not if the physical incarnation cannot hold the higher vibration for the soul. They are connected to each other. Open energy between the soul and the physical body is not separate. One cannot hold high vibrational energy and the other not. Lower frequency humans have lower frequency souls. Most humans, unfortunately, are not high frequency. This is why many souls were not able to do anything to stop the karmic cycle when it was happening on Earth. The souls were stuck just as much as the physical incarnations. Energy of the seventh ray and below are very slow. It's like quicksand. The soul needs to get out of the quicksand to get to the higher rays. I asked, but if the seven rays of light are traits of source or expressions of source, why would the seventh ray be so much more low vibrational? Wouldn't all rays be high vibrational? And what came through was no, they are not low vibrational in the non-physical space. They are low vibrational in the physical. When the rays are translated into the physical, they translate even further. So this is about that further refraction, which creates the distortion or the, the more skewedness um, into the physical when we interpret it or translate it into the physical. I asked, so does the higher self not vibrationally align to any of the seven rays? And as we saw in the sixth ray, um, under Keepers of the Ray, we have other open energy of oneness. So Abe is saying that the higher self is usually open energy, like how Abe is open energy. They are usually open energy in oneness. So in a way, they are keepers of the sixth ray for the soul, but at the same time, they are not held within the seven rays. So they're separate from the soul um, and more of like overseers of the soul in a way. So I asked, how does a person connect to their higher self in the physical body? What determines the higher self for the physical person? And what came through is 
the higher self is not made available to the person in the physical until the physical person makes the attempt to connect to the higher self. But to connect to the higher self, the person must first connect to their soul. I asked, so what exactly is the higher self to the person? And what came through was, the higher self is the higher aspect of the soul in oneness. The higher self is not the soul, it is even higher than the soul. I asked, so there cannot be too many different higher selves if the higher self exists in that oneness energy. And what came through was no, usually more so all souls share the same higher self. Higher open energy is in oneness. There is no separation. Separation is only in thought and mind of individuals on your planet. So I asked Abe to clarify that higher vibrational um, perspective of the seven rays of light on a soul level versus when we bring it into the physical and we have that further distortion or skewedness, if they can sort of explain or clarify that. We'll use the sixth ray as an example. The non-physical energetic form of the sixth ray is creating your reality from a high vibrational space, turning your dreams and desires into realities. That physical, distorted, skewed energetic form of the sixth ray is creating your reality from a low vibrational space, creating through reaction and focusing on what you do not want and bringing that into your reality. And I'm going to stop here for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about how the seven rays of light sort of shift as we move into, into 5D, into the new earth. As we ascend, as we raise our consciousness, the seven rays of light will sort of shift along with our energetic vibration in the physical as well as in the non-physical, but especially in the physical. So we're going to talk more about that in the next video. And I still have a ton of other questions to ask in regards to the seven rays of light and our soul's origin and what happens with our souls in the movement between the rays of light. So we're going to get into all of that in the next video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching this video. Until the next one, together we are Abe in oneness and love.